Open your window if you can and listen closely. Most likely, you can't hear many birds. US and Canadian bird populations have fallen by 3 billion individuals since 1970. To make matters worse, modern noises mask their calls, reducing their ability to communicate and our ability to hear them. In another way though, we are able to hear more birds than ever before. Since the advent of portable recording technologies in the early 20th century, people have travelled far and wide to capture the sounds of birds. You can access over one million of these on the Corner Lab of Ornithology's Macaulay Library website, including digitised historical sounds, which offer immersive encounters with lost species and past environments. This William Gunn recording, for instance, transports us inside an Atlantic puffin burrow in 1953 New Brunswick. And this recording takes us to 1986 Hawaii, where Jim Jacoby recorded one of the last surviving Kauai O'o birds. My Shirk funded PhD project at Queen's University investigates the collection and afterlives of historical bird sound recordings like these. Through archival research, interviews, and analysis of academic literature, I trace the rich lives of these sounds, asking what they tell us about human nature relationships of the past, present, and future. For example, in 1935, ornithologist Arthur A. Allen led an expedition to record the sounds of vanishing species. Horrified by the decline of birds in North America, he hoped to guard future generations against the pain of losing not only our winged companions, but also their voices. In Louisiana, he collected the first, and still the only, undisputed sound recordings of the iconic ivory-billed woodpecker. Today, many assume the ivory bill is extinct, yet some people still trawl the southeastern US in the hope of rediscovering them. Allen's 1935 recordings have had a critical role in these searches, being played out in forests to trick any surviving ivory bills into responding, and inspiring searchers to capture their own recordings to evidence the species' persistence. In other words, Allen's recordings not only preserve the haunting calls of a species we may have lost, but also offer us a tool for potentially finding them again. Alongside traditional academic outputs, I'm creating a podcast series called Last Call for Lost Birds, where I will bring extinct birds to life through immersive and accessible audio storytelling. I hope this project will not only exhibit the importance of wildlife sound recordings to our cultural and ecological heritage, but also inspire action to stop more bird voices being lost forever.